Air India just bought 840 new airplanes. Well, 470, but with the option to buy 370 more. But that's a massive number of planes. A deal worth 90 billion dollars. That's more than the GDP of Sri Lanka. And if you really add 840 to the current Air India fleet, they'll surpass American Airlines, which is the world's biggest aviation player. So what is Air India up to? Air India's largest ever plane deal in history. Single largest order. This is the mother of all aviation deals. The biggest airline deal in aviation history. You're here in the event to number one. We need to understand the sequence here. Before this buy happened, Air India also announced a merger with Astara. Air Asia India and Air India Express are also merging soon. They also announced Vihan, their complete plan to come back and take 30% of the global aviation industry. Trust me, there's a lot of things to unpack here. And while the media has covered fluffy things like Air India coming back to Tata's, Tata Sons have won the bid to acquire debt ridden Air India from Government of India, the political camaraderie, landmark agreement, ke liye, bahut bahut badhai aur deta. and the patriotic vibe. There's way more depth here. We've been reading, researching, and talking to experts to see what's really happening here. How's an airline with an accumulated loss of 78,000 crores and 52,000 crores in debt planning to make a comeback? And even though Air India seems like it's coming back, how will they exactly do it? How will Air India really challenge Indigo's 58% market share? And how will it capture the massive $840 billion aviation industry? The short answer, here are the input levers that they use. I want to explain this in more detail. So let's dig in. So we need to understand some nuances about the Indian aviation industry. If you bring the domestic market share pie, Indigo owns a clear monopoly with 58% market share, followed by Spice at 9.4%, Vistara at 8.4%, and Air India at 6.8%. But if you look at Indian airline players, they've all made massive losses in the recent years. But 2023 is going to be an interesting year for Air India. The input metrics to win are clear. This is what Air India has to nail one by one to capture a large chunk of the aviation market. First, starting with consolidation. See, Air India currently has four brands. Air India themselves, the full service carrier. Vistara, the service premium carrier. Air Asia India, the low cost carrier. And Air India Express, the international low cost carrier. Air India has already begun merging these companies. The idea is to create one full-service airline and one low-cost airline in the group. The merger with Vistara, where Singapore Airlines will invest $250 million for a 25% stake in Air India, will create a full-service airline. And the merger between Air Asia India and Air India Express will create a low-cost airline. But let's try to understand the difference between a full-service and a low-cost carrier. The main difference is that full-service carriers focus on network profitability, whereas low-cost carriers focus on route profitability. For example, full-service carriers have a hub and spoke model where planes stop at a hub before taking their passengers to the destination. Whereas low-cost carriers focus on targeting profitable routes and carrying passengers from one route to the other. No model is better than the other, but every airline has a preference. This is also why low-cost carriers cost less, but don't have features like loyalty programs, in-flight meals, entertainment systems, etc. Consolidating the four industries gives Air India a domestic market share of 26%. And when consolidation happens in the aviation industry, well, fighting with Tata's on price could be an interesting battle. Fleet expansion. Currently, Air India has a fleet of 113 airplanes. Add leased airplanes to that, and the total size increases to 221. But Indigo has a fleet size of 280 plus. The buying of 470 airplanes come into play here. It evokes memories of June 2005, when Indigo plays an audacious order of 100 Airbus aircrafts at the Paris Air Show. It has served them well. They now own more than half of the domestic aviation market. But the interesting bit is the diversity of the fleet here. The nuance of having a single type of A320 family of aircraft has always been Indigo's edge in making more margins by standardizing service, maintenance, pilot training, etc. But as of now, Indigo flies domestically and to the edges of Asia, operating flights from Vietnam in the east to Turkey in the west. Whereas Air India has a network of 39 international destinations. And with its order of 470 airplanes, it wants to crack the right mix for domestic as well as international need, where running long haul flights of about 16 hours could be possible. And by the way, Indigo has ordered 500 more aircrafts for their expansion plan and they're awaiting delivery soon. This brings us to the international market aspirations of Air India. Currently, around 60% of Indians traveling on international routes are carried by foreign airlines, 
It means that out of 100 passengers, only about 40 are transported by Indian carriers. Indigo, with its fleet of A320s, dominates the domestic market, but internationally only touches the edges of Asia. Whereas Air India serves more than 50 countries across five continents. And add to that its exclusive international airport slots and membership of Star Alliance, Air India is gearing up to challenge foreign rivals soon. But what's Air Alliance? Air Alliance is an interesting exclusive alliance that includes 26 airlines that partner with each other across ticketing, use of flight codes, and even share airport lounges. Air India is the only Indian airline to be a part of the Star Alliance. But I want to reiterate this. The code sharing agreement is massive as it allows airlines to sell seats on each other's flights. For example, if you want to fly to USA and assume that Air India doesn't go to the US, that's still okay. You can still book a ticket from the Air India website to the US, but it'll be operated by another carrier from the Star Alliance. The main benefit here is seamless transfers, particularly when connecting between airlines that aren't partners through an airline alliance. This is a defensible strategy by Air India against a player like Indigo. From a connectivity perspective, Indians have been relying a lot on Emirates, Etihad and Qatar since the last few years. Strengthening of Air India would mean more options for Southeast Asian passengers into Europe and US, and probably on way better pricing points. The next lever is operational efficiencies. There are two lowest hanging fruits that Air India would want to solve and get out of the way right away. Route optimization and on-time performance. In the aviation business, some routes are more valuable than others. For example, the Delhi to Mumbai route is the fifth busiest in the world. And it makes sense for carriers to increase frequency of flights on these routes. The Tatas have started restructuring the route network already. In the first step towards the strategy, Air Asia India vacated the Delhi Vishaka Patnam and Mumbai Lucknow routes, paving the way for Air India as the only Tata airline to operate on it. This consolidation has happened to focus full service airlines on valuable routes and low cost carriers on price sensitive leisure routes. We'll also see Air India increasing flights between cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Bangalore, and Hyderabad. The second operational efficiency is OTP. OTP or on time performance as a metric is super important for members. This indicates the percentage of flights that arrived or departed at the gate under 15 minutes of the scheduled arrival on departure time. While cheap rates and good deals are a good acquisition source, on-time performance is what breeds loyalty with an airline and ensures that these travelers are retained with the brand. OTP also brings B2B business, something critical to make Air India top two airline in India. And Air India already leads on-time performance as a segment. In October 22, Air India led the charts with an on-time performance of 90.8%. The other two Tata-owned airlines, including Vistara and Air Asia India, were tied at the second place with an OTP of 89.1%, while the largest budget carrier, while Indigo, was at the third spot at 87.5%. This is where the Tata ecosystem also starts coming into the picture. See, Tatas are known for being the steel to software company. They're a giant group worth $311 billion overall. Air India has the potential to make the most of this family, and they've already started doing it. For example, TC has developed a Red Smart Plus app for Air Asia India, which helped management monitor exactly how much time is taken for various tasks such as loading, unloading, aircraft cleaning, fueling, and catering. The app provided reports on projected on-time performances for the day and improved the airline's operational efficiency by a huge while. All of this gears Air India to the large future demand that they're gearing up to serve. Seen total, Indian airlines have placed orders for more than 1,100 aircrafts that are to be delivered in the coming years. Pre-COVID, the air traffic in India was around 75 million international passengers, and out of them, 60 to 65 percent used foreign carriers. With the economy and disposable incomes growing, the number of air travelers is projected to touch 40 crores by 2027. India is the world's third largest and the fastest growing aviation market in the world. This Air India expansion will also aid in getting back India's international traffic from overseas carriers. You'll see more airport hubs popping up all across the country, which is not possible in the absence of a strong player like Air India. And lastly, it's all about restructuring the vigor of the Maharaja back. Brand, India's growth story. It's not the most common sight to see world leaders announcing a mega deal with a private player. Let me tell you what's happening here. See, the current government has a tall disinvestment plan. In fact, the current government accounts for 72% of total disinvestment that has been done since 1991. This is worth about four and a half lakh crores. The sale of Air India to the Tata Group and other 840 aircrafts order shows the success of the government's disinvestment program. See, 
Tata has always been synonymous with the Indian growth story. The government couldn't find a better, more safer, and a nostalgic partner to carry out the Air India disinvestment project with. Plus, the massive expansion program of buying 840 planes will create about a million jobs in the US and position India as a job giver rather than an outsourcing hub. Aviation has a multiplier economic effect. An operation of one aircraft can create 150 to 200 jobs depending on the size of the aircraft. Positioning Air India with India's growth, punctuality, quality of travel, their website, app, airport experience and call center experience is what will rebuild confidence in the Air India brand. Pair this with the money firepower that Tata's have and a luxury that Indigo doesn't. Tata seem to be wonderfully positioned for success in the aviation industry. The Tata's would love to position Air India as synonymous to a growing nation's growing carrier. If they're able to take care of these input levers well, Indigo's monopoly could not only be challenged but overthrown very soon.